Sometimes it feels like the easiest part of this journey is to be on the road. But then the car decides we need another lesson. Our DC-DC converter that charges the low voltage battery, the 12 volt system, seems just to have broken. And now we have to take the seat out, take the DC-DC out, adjust the replacement unit to the correct voltage, put that in. Probably takes 40 minutes, an hour. Always surprises around the corner. When there's a problem, then the team's morale goes a little bit down, and Claudio's morale goes up, we have way drama. And then when everything's going smoothly, the team are nice and happy, and Claudio's like, oh no, this is boring, where's the drama, where's the entertainment? So we're kind of like yin and yang, you know, with the team and the filming. So always maintaining that sense of perfect balance, I think. <laughs> But it appears that just the cable has uh, obviously worn away and just snapped under some heat shrink. Um, so we've checked it out. We know exactly the length of cable. We'll just bridge it with a wire. So yeah, that was really like 10 minutes. And in another 10, when everything is back together again, we'll be on the move, which is good. Yeah. Oh, I just realized actually, um, after putting everything back in again, uh, the fan wasn't turning on. Maybe we've just lodged a wire or something or possibly the fuse has gone, or something like that. It's a fuse that was gone, and the question is why did it break? Because it shouldn't have. Aha! Yeah, but it did to the chassis. But it did, Toby, look. Yeah, you never know everything about the car, and now we know that the bodywork pretty much sits on this chassis tube here, and the cable just chafed through and was shorting it to the chassis. The car is just such a complicated beast and we have actually had very mild problems for a prototype that was built in nine months. <coughs> Ten minutes, we found out exactly what the problem is. It hasn't delayed us much at all and now we, we are a lot the wiser for anything like this happening again. Uh, simple problems but they still take time. Let's get this car um, through. We had a lot of challenges to overcome since we arrived in Colombia, but it doesn't mean we are eager to leave. In fact, it's the opposite. It's just fantastic how enthusiastic people are. Today, there were school buses passing by there. They're shouting and waving at you. It's just so cool to see that. Everywhere you go, you get these positive reactions. And, and all the support that we are getting here, it's just stunning. They've got three more days driving to get to the last Colombian town, Pasto. The route takes them over the biggest mountain range on the trip, La Lina. But with the car now performing perfectly, it doesn't seem to be a problem. Getting a ride into Pasto is Sebastian, an ex-racing driver who offered to help the team along the way. Pasto, at last. First time in the car, yeah, amazing. No noise, uh, acceleration, it's, it's amazing. And really smooth, I mean, this, this is just amazing, amazing. Great to give Sebastian a, a drive in the car, as a race car driver. Him complimenting the car is also is obviously a, more of a compliment because he knows what a race car is. He's driven a lot of race cars before. I think it will be a world record. I've told everybody here in town there's going to be a world record and we can't miss it out. That's why we got so many people here. <laughs> Part of a world record, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're leaving Colombia today and Colombia has been my favorite country so far on the trip and we've we almost spent a month here. My visa is running out tomorrow, so I have to leave Colombia today. Uh. <laughs> Challenge-wise, the first thing we have is the Ecuadorian border. I mean, everybody else seems to be pretty lax about it, and for some reason I'm, I'm a little more worried. Sebastian uh, is sorting us out. He knows some people in the truck haulage business there. We got some guy waiting in, uh, in Ecuador side, and then a friend of mine in the Colombian side. So we're going to be just perfect. He's one of these guys that knows people who knows people, you know? So uh, we're hoping for a record uh, speed border crossing today. Colombia has just been so good to us. We spent about a third of the entire trip in Colombia due to mainly the shipping delay and the fire delay. Hey, what a road. You like what it? What a road. We were, we were working out, we drove for 
what, 40 minutes probably? Yeah. Didn't use any energy. Yeah. 40 minutes, 40 minutes. at speed. Yeah. Yeah. Get the stamps on the passport so we can go to the other side. Very happy man. Fastest border crossing ever. One hour, 45 minutes. Um, through his help, a lot. Yeah. In Ecuador, as in Colombia, banditry is a problem. But thanks to the Racing Green VIP status, a new police escort welcomes the team, courtesy of the Ecuadorian government. And very friendly police, as it turns out. We met our police escort for the day. They were letting us play with their guns, take pictures. Just completely chilled, completely relaxed. It's usually a good system. Make the guys with the guns your friends. And now, we're going to a shooting range, are they going to let us shoot their M16s? Really great to be in Ecuador, what a welcome. La <laughs> Manzana. That's uh, Nick's shot right there. Yeah. Typical welcome in Ecuador is to get to go and shoot some of the Ecuadorian Special Police Forces M16s across the road with a bus um, just going past it. You missed my mark. <laughs> where, where do you go and you just stop on the side of the road, pull out an M16 and start shooting? It is insane! You know, today is a crazy day. This morning, it's getting driving tips from a former Formula 3 driver. Tonight, we've been shooting with the Ecuadorian Special Service and the M16s. Crazy, crazy day. Great fun. Let's go. They've completed 16,000 kilometers. 10,000 to go. Next week, Ecuador and Peru. For more background, go to racinggreenendurance.com.